a Mobius, another Mobius, and an 808. You know what they all have in common? They're all knackered, and I've no idea why. Okay, I have an inkling why. Maybe they just don't make things like they used to anymore. So I've had a small factor HD camera. I've actually been having to run with um, my old uh, GoPro Hero 2 on this quad. Um, would be using the Hero 4, but I don't want to smash it to pieces. Um, and even though you know the Hero 2 still takes great picture uh, and is a fantastic camera, as would the 4B, and I know everybody who's any good will use a GoPro 4 because the picture is so good. Um, it's still heavy and it just looks like a massive brick on the front. The actual size of these is the right thing for me, I think, for a quad. Um, but I don't just want to replace the board because they were expensive and I didn't want to replace Mobius with Mobius because two of them have just broken. So what to get? Well, I was lusting after the Runcam HD2 camera, but that was reasonably expensive. In the meantime, I found something a bit new, which was the Firefly Q6, which is, uh, you can get it in bright colours, about the same size as a Mobius, and it's got a little screen on it. So um, I thought I'd go through it, let you know what it's all about, and then maybe do some test flights and, and see how the footage turns out. Um, the main thing about this, uh, I got this one from Banggood, it was £50, which is super cheap, and it does 1080p 60. Um, it's got sort of some sort of gyro stabilizer in there as well. I'm not um, really interested now. In I'm just interested in getting decent 1080p60 um, off a quad. Um, yeah, so let's go through it and then let's see how the flight turns out. Okay, so first off, a quick unboxing. Uh, it comes in this pretty box. Camera's nicely secured in one of these um, foam things. That's the camera. You also get some instructions. Uh, this which is a live out cable, it seems to be exactly the same as the GoPro sort. Uh, USB, charge or computer, and some stickers. The manual's quite reasonably written, uh, has a good description of the modes and things, although the live out cable actually features a GoPro uh, in its example, so I don't quite know what that's about. I've already charged this up and, and put a micro SD card in, um, so let's turn it on. It's got four little buttons here. So I've actually left it on photo mode, let me just do that. Um, as you see, a nice bright display, it tells us the mode we're in, the resolution, uh, time, uh, and the battery life. This button then acts as a mode for a short press. And we can basically go into photos or video from here. You can then also go into the settings, which you can change things like uh, the size, whether you want to be time lapse, cycle, uh, auto power off, WDR, which I switched on for now. If you want to flip it up. Uh, the display that is, the sounds, burst mode, time lapse, ISO, sharpness, uh, there's a whole bunch. Uh, and that's this gyro stabilizer thing which I'm not going to mess with. Uh, I need to come out of that. There's not much more to say about that, other than that I think the display is really useful um, because you don't have to worry about what mode you're in. Um, you can see exactly your battery life, your the, what you're recording in. This is 1080p60. Um, so yeah, I mean I don't want to go on about it. Um, it's got some LEDs at the end here, so when you do go in and start recording, they will flash. Uh, although you've got an option to turn those off. Seems pretty bright at the front, but it doesn't get captured on camera at all. Yeah, stop that again. Two small complaints. Let's turn this off. Firstly, it doesn't come out of any mounting hardware, 
but it's got a nice flat base here so I'm going to put some velcro on and, and tape over the top. Secondly, back on the 8 of 8 days and because they were trying to pretend to be a key fob they had this little thing which was brilliant for putting a tether on so even if this got launched off the quad you could tether it on so it would just be rattling around. Um, GoPro still uses tethers uh, and I use them when I'm skiing or, or uh, snorkeling. There's nowhere to put a tether. It's nice bright colour so I'm hoping it won't uh, get lost anywhere but I've spent a long time wandering around the field looking for cameras and just for the sake of putting a little uh, hole or some sort of thing which you could put a tether through would really help out because I feel these are being designed now for FPV so uh, I do feel that would be a real advantage so manufacturers sort that out so I'm going to get some uh, velcro on and, and get it on the quad and, and get flying it. Here's the firefly mounted up on this quad. Uh, it's not bad. I think I think we could do better. I mean, I haven't got a decent strap for it, so this is all a bit big, and I have to undo it to start the buttons. But it seems it's on there fairly tight. So off we go, and it's quite handy because the field has quite a low sun and some dappled light, uh, and so it's quite useful to get a good indication of how it handles the light. Now instantly, um, I can see that the camera angle is wrong and I really need to work on the mount. As well as that, I am getting some jello. Uh, this is maybe somewhat to do with the mount, although the GoPro in the same position doesn't have any problems. So this is a little bit more sensitive um, and a little bit about uh, me needing to work on mounting a little better. I haven't got a particularly full of vibrations camera. I have to say that the footage colour-wise looks pretty good. This is with WDR on, although the manual warns you that in a sunny day WDR shouldn't be on. Um, that kind of goes against what I know from WDR. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the colour. It looks instantly better than the Mobius. Um, we're on to flight two now, and this is with WDR off. Um, again, sort of flying into the sunlight with this dappled effect. I can't really see a difference. I'm, I'm liking the light, I'm liking the colour. It looks pretty good to me. Uh, it's just the angle that's annoying me. And certainly the jello effect is definitely a certain frequency of my motors running. Uh, which is quite low. As, as the uh, throttle goes up it gets a little bit better actually. Um, it's just a shame. I, I need to uh, go and print something to get this the right angle, the same as my FPV camera. So I, I kind of feel WDR on's better. There's some some bits of overexposure there into the sun. It gets a bit dark, as you kind of would expect without uh, the wide dynamic range. But it's all good, and it didn't come off in that spin. So at least the mountain's tight. Flight three now. I've put WDR staying to um, off, and there's this color mode called Vivid. Uh, which suggests it's going to enhance your colours. Um, it says to use this, or you can use this, if, if you're not going to post-process the colour. Um, I don't generally post-process, but I thought it might be a mode that people would look at and say, yeah, you know, I want my um, colours quite vivid. I don't really see much of a difference. I think the highlights get kind of overexposed there and go a little bit overly white. So yeah, I'm not too convinced with Vivid. I think sort of stay um, with the normal. It's hard for me to spot a difference between any of these, to be honest. Um, and this is Flight 4, the, the last combination, which was WDR on and Vivid on, to see if that made a difference. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, I was tending to fly a bit faster over, uh, sort of around the trees, and, and that meant I was looking at the ground um, a lot more, uh, but again, I'm the the camera is certainly taking 1080p 60, no doubt about that. It feels um, quite a lot like a GoPro when I look at the sort of color reproduction and how it handles the light. I feel that's quite similar. Um, it just doesn't have its the GoPro's stability in in being able to handle the vibration as well. Um, so be aware of that one. That's a little bit for me to fix and it's a little bit of a weakness on the camera. 
uh, and this is just the last bit. I was actually going slow enough here so I could get more of the dappled light effect. Uh, it wasn't much fun on the um, there's a CMOS camera in the, in the quad, and so it was particularly difficult to fly into that low sunlight anyway. Now, on the last flight, I put the gyro stabilization on, uh, and the result is this. And where'd it go? It ran out of battery. Well, I thought for once I'd get a review done in one day, uh, but as you can see, the change of clothes illustrates that um, I had to go and do some more stuff. So the battery didn't last long. Um, I went back and I totted up exactly uh, how much I did, and I wrote it down on this important post-it. Um, and including a couple of bits I did in the house, I found out it only recorded for 26 minutes and 4 seconds. There was maybe 5 or 10 minutes where it was um, sat on but not recording. Uh, the manual specified about 50 minutes, so it, this was well under. Um, so was this typical? Is it, was that the norm? Because that's not much, is it? Um, so just in case it wasn't a case of the first battery through it um, wasn't as good, it needed a few cycles, I did a few cycles. Um, I went and did another five in all. Uh, the second one, and, and basically what I did, I, I charged it up, I just hit record and I see how long it would go for. So it's perhaps not quite the same as doing a lot of on and off, but it gives you uh, an impression of um, if it's if it's growing and what it's going to be. So second one got 35 minutes 58 seconds, which was a bit better. Uh, third one, 38 minutes 43 seconds, better still. Fourth one, 45 minutes 40 seconds, getting there. Fifth, 44 20, and sixth, 44 58. At that point, um, I think we're looking at somewhere around the 40 something minutes. Uh, so including, you know, turning on and off and, and messing around with the settings, say 40 minutes. So if you've got a quad where you can fly for two minutes and then the battery's done, uh, you'll be able to put a reasonable amount through them. For me, um, getting five to six minutes, um, I didn't really manage five flights um, on this one, which isn't really enough. So either um, you're going to have to get a couple of them and have one charging as you go, um, or you're going to have to use the supplied cable uh, to charge it as you fly. Or probably what I think I might do is um, when I'm out um, with friends and we're flying, we might have some downtime and I can just basically plug something in here to get it charging when I'm not flying. So there's enough downtime for me to get sorted. Um, but I certainly felt this was it's worth knowing that the battery life on this um, is not great. And this is where it differs to a GoPro which of course will go for longer and you can change the battery um, and ditto on the Runcam HD2 where you can change the battery and I don't know the stats on it but I'm guessing it will go longer because I haven't had a camera that will go much shorter than this on that first one but let, let call it 40 minutes but be aware okay now um, we're going to go back to stuff I filmed yesterday about can you use this as an FPV camera so I guess the question is can you use the camera itself for FPV? Uh, and the answer on that one is happily yes. Uh, and it seems to work fine with a, a couple of caveats. Um, first off, let's talk about the um, lag. Here's me filming the camera, and if you look at the TV behind it, There's a very slight lag there, but it's it's pretty good. What I do notice though is um, in the corner of the screen, uh, just here and just here, you've got some symbols which you don't seem to be able to get rid of. If I go into the settings, they go away, but if I come back, um, they come back as well, and if I start recording, you get a big blob of um, red recording indication there. I can't find anywhere for that to go away. Uh, perhaps I'll bring out a firmware update, but for now that's something to be aware of, um, that you might get this big <laughs> blobby red thing uh, in the middle of your recordings. But other than that, it, it looks pretty good. Um, I wouldn't use it on a mini quad, but it'd be absolutely fine on a plane. 
Oh, just one thing to note on this um, this cable as well. According to the manual, this takes a two to six S uh, and does the voltage conversion. I'm powering it straight from five volts at the moment, but um, according to the manual, um, it says it should display the voltage uh, that it's getting um, somehow, which which maybe this thing over here. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm not sure I'm utterly convinced of that. I might just stick to 5 volts if I use it. So, to sum up then, what did I think of this camera? Um, well, let's go through the pros and cons, which I was also have written down here, if you wonder why I'm looking up and down. Um, Pros-wise, price is fantastic. Uh, £50, converted to dollars, as you will, uh, gets you a good camera, which will take pretty good footage. I, I'm really impressed with the picture as it films. That's good. It does 1080p uh, 60 frames a second. It does 720p and 120 frames a second. It's got some 4K mode that it does in 24 frames a second. That I'm not really particularly interested in that. And I, I, I really think if you're 4K filming, then you want a better camera anyway. So ignore that bit. Um, and I also really love this screen and the fact it's got sounds. I think the screen is a real uh, great idea. That's fantastic. Um, but you know, it's it's certainly got its downsides. Um, it seems more susceptible to vibrations. I, some of that's my mount, uh, but certainly more so than a GoPro. The battery life is fairly woeful, um, although having put a couple of cycles through 40-ish minutes, um, it just means I'll need to do extra in terms of charging. I mean, I've got power banks and I've got converters to plug a LiPo in so I can juice it up in between flights. So, you know, I, I can work around it. Um, another strange thing is how hot this thing runs. When it's recording, this top section is really hot. And where you've got these uh, metal surrounds for the USBs, if you hold that against your hand, it will burn you. It's, it's hot enough that it's like, whoa. So... If you've got this against um, a LiPo or something, be very aware that this gets scorching hot and you really don't want it <laughs> setting your, your LiPo on fire. I don't know why it runs so hot. Um, I'm presuming there's some sort of heat sink in there that's underneath the plastic, but it is it is really hot. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Um, there's obviously no mounting hardware. Uh, I mean, I'm going to build something, I'd 3D print something to, to put it in. Um, but it, it would be nice... Um, to have something you could just clip in uh, and then maybe that's something you could put on a plane or a cord and just clip it in when you want and get it out and it saves the whole wrapping it in a, in a strap. Uh, lastly, there's there's no lens cap on the cons. So this is very exposed. So be careful you know, putting it in a bag and stuff like that. Uh, overall though, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Um, I got this to replace a Mobius and it's way better than the Mobius was. Uh, so I'm happy about that. Um, how good it continues to be, uh, I'll find out because I'm going to get this on my quad. It's going to also go in at least uh, two planes. Uh, the one, I, one build I've got coming up is a mini Talon where I can put this uh, as my HD camera alongside an FPV camera uh, and see how the footage comes up from that. So uh, I'll be using this a lot. One thing I'm going to follow up with is write a couple of uh, well write an email to the developers of the firmware to say um, you need to do something so you can get rid of that info on the screen because if you do want to use it as an FPV uh, camera on a plane and it, it looks reasonably good you, you don't want this blipping recording thing over the top of your LSD um, or something and I'm wondering if they can do some sort of battery safe thing so when you are recording maybe an option to turn the screen off I don't know how much uh, battery life that will save perhaps it's negligible but I think it would be quite useful um, so there you go Firefly Q6 pretty good but um, have a look at that footage make your own mind up um, I'll, I'll put a link to where I got it uh, just in case you're interested not an affiliate link just uh, for info uh, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.